We continue now at the top of Daf Samech Vav Amar Aleph and Maseches Ksubis. This is Ksubis Daf 66a. On the previous summer, the Tana told Rava that Rabbi Akiva holds that when it comes to mitziyah, so when it comes to the items that a woman finds, so that goes to her husband. And so Rava now asks, why should that be the case? Because when it comes to the extra amount of her earnings that she has, Demaisa Yodahi, that that actually is her earnings, as Rashi over here says, Demaisa Yodah, V'shayich Lememar Shiyei Shalo, you could have said the surplus earnings also should go to the husband. Demaisa Yodah, Tachas because in general her earnings are instead of the mizonos that the husband provides for her. And yet, what does Rabbi Akiva say over there? Amar Rabbi Akiva liatzma, yet Rabbi Akiva says that her surplus earnings go to her. So mitziyasa lo kol shekein. So Rava says that which she finds, that should certainly be even better than the surplus earnings, and that should also go to her. That's not, as we learned in a mission, and this mission is going to show that the surplus earnings go to the woman. Konem shani osa lefichah eno tzarech lafir. It says, let's say she makes a konem and she says, whatever I earn, it's not going to go to you, it's going to be forbidden to you, meaning to her husband. So the halach is, the Tanakhama says, he doesn't need to annul the vow because she has to, the earnings have to go to the husband. She has to produce for the husband and therefore she can't take that back. But Rabbi Akiva, um, Rabbi Akiva says, Yafer, no, he should annul the vow. Why? Because maybe there's going to be a surplus of earnings. That does not need to go to the husband. It really goes to her. And therefore he should annul the vow because what if he wants to partake from those surplus earnings? That would be a problem if she made this konim. And so therefore you see in this mission, according to Rabbi Akiva, that the surplus earnings go to the wife, and therefore, again, that which she finds as well should go to the wife, according to Rabbi Akiva. And so the Gemara answers, Ella rather apoch. You're going to have to reverse what the Tana taught. Metziah sa'isha lebal, it's the Tana Kama that says that what she finds goes to her husband. Rabbi Akiva omer liatzma, but Rabbi Akiva says, no, just like the surplus earnings go to her, so to her, or those things which she finds, they go to her as well. And the Gemara continues, one second. It's not so true that the surplus earnings always go to the wife. But when Ravin came, he said that Rabbi Yochanan said, If you're talking about a situation of hadaf, of surplus that was not a difficult surplus for her to make, so in such a situation, in other words, if it's regular extra earnings, which didn't take extra effort, so then everybody agrees it goes to the husband. So there are surplus earnings that go to the husband. The only Locust on a common Rabbi Kiva was if you have hadaf al yedei adachak, meaning you have the surplus earnings which took a lot of effort. There's a machlokus. Tanakama savar lebal. The Tanakama holds that those earnings go to her husband. But Rabbi Kiva savar liatzma, and Rabbi Kiva holds that goes to herself. And so, therefore, what's even the question? Rabbi Kiva was only saying she keeps these surplus earnings, the ones that she put a lot of effort into. But the regular surplus earnings they go to the husband, and therefore, maybe it is true that Rabbi Kiva holds that that which she finds goes to the husband. But the Gemara answers no. I'm a rapper. A papa says, Mitsiyasa Kadofa Sha'al Yadeh Hadachak Dami. Really, that which she finds is really more comparable to surplus earnings, which she puts a lot of effort into, because these are things, it's not something that's common. It's not common to find lost objects, and therefore it's similar to surplus that comes through extra effort. And that's why the Gemara was comparing the two, and that's why the Gemara was saying, Pluksa Rabbi Akiva Rabbonan. And that actually is a machlokus between Rabbi Akiva and the Rabbonan, and that's exactly why we reversed it as well. In other words, we reversed it, and we said that according to Rabbi Akiva, it actually is La'atzma. She, she keeps those surplus earnings, which she puts the effort into, and that's also what she keeps. She also keeps the Metziah, that, that which she finds. And the Gemara continues, Boy, Rav Papa, Rav Papa asks the following question, What if she does two things, she produces two things in one shot? Is that considered like surplus earnings, which is made with extra effort? Boy, Ravina, Ravina asks, Shlosha, Odali, What if it's three or four things she's able to produce at once? And the Gemara says, Take with the Gemara leaves that as a question. And Rashi over here explains, The Gemara initially thinks that that which she finds is similar to surplus plus earnings, which does not come with extra effort, where everybody agrees it really goes to the husband. So, why is there even a machlokus then? By that which she finds, it should certainly go to the husband. And the Gemara then answers, Really, that which she finds really is like When you find something, you got to pursue it. You have fish that stayed on the dry land. All kinds of things that you're looking for, that's like Al Yadei 
Pesach, it is a machlokus, and therefore, again, that's exactly why we said that according to Rabbi Akiva, we're going to say that those items are la'atzma, that she keeps it for herself, and the same thing with, with mitziyasa. And Rashi continues, Shtayim shalosh v'yarba v'asachas, let's say she's produced income two, three, or four different ways at once, Shomeris kishum, she's guarding kishum, and at the same time, v'tav pishton, she's spinning flax, maybe she's teaching women to sing, and that's also for money, so she's warming up these eggs in her lap at the same time. Is that considered al or not? And again, the Gemara said teiku. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said boshtu pagam if there's humiliation and degradation, so then that payment goes to her. But Rav Yehuda ben Beseir and the Mishnah said no, a portion of that has to go to the husband as well because he also suffers some of the humiliation. And the Gemara says maskif lo rava bar Rav Hanan. Rava bar Rav Hanan asked as follows: Elamayata. But according to that, bayish susaso shel chaver. Let's say a person embarrasses the horse of his friend. Hachanami deboy lamita and leboshes. Does he now need to pay the person the humiliation fee because the person is embarrassed because his horse was embarrassed? But the Gemara says that's not a good question. Vesus bar boshes, who do you think a horse gets embarrassed? That doesn't even make sense. El arokak bevigdo shel chaveru hachinami. Really, the question is as follows: What if he spits at the baget, at the clothing, at the garment of his friend? There also, de boy lemitan leboshes. Does he need to give him boshes? Does he need to give him the payment for humiliation? Vechit teimen. If you're going to say hachinami, that indeed is the case. Vatanan, but we learned in a mishnah rokak vehigia boharok. If a person spits at somebody and the the saliva hits the person, upara rosha ishur. Let's say a person uncovers. The head of a woman, the heavier talisumi man, or somebody takes someone's clothing off, chayev litein lo arva meyo zuz. It says you have to pay the person four hundred zuz because that's a great humiliation. V'yomer a papa and a papa said lo shano el abo. That's only true if if the roke, if the spit actually hits the person. Avol bevigdo potter, but if it hits his garment, he's potter. And so therefore, you see, if you spit on the person's property, that is not considered a personal humiliation. You don't have to pay the person that money. So how come it is that if you if you do something to the person's wife, suddenly you have to pay the person? You have to pay the husband. And the Gemara answers, Bevigdo less lazy loose. So the person is not humiliated when you do something to his clothing, but Ishto is lazy loose. But a person is humiliated when you do something to his wife. And the Gemara says, according to that, Amar le Ravina le Ravashi. So Ravina said to Ravashi, Elamiyata, according to that, Bayish ani ben Tovim. Let's say you embarrass a poor person, but he comes from a noble family. This lazy loose of the Kulu, Bene Mishpacha. Now there's embarrassment to the whole family, all the family members. Hachanami de Boy, Lamitan lehu Boshes, Lachal Bene Mishpacha. Do you have to now Boshes to all of the family members? members. Amarle, so he said to him, Hasam Lav Gufay over there, even though they're related, it's not considered as if it's his own guf, as if it's part of his body. Hacha Ishto Gufay Havoy. But here there's a principle that a person's wife is like his own body, and that's why there is a portion of the payment that has to go to the husband. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, Haposek Mos Lechasano, let's say a father in law pledges to give money to his son in law as part of a dowry. Umez Chasano and his son in law dies. Amru Chachamim, the Chachamim said, Yachalu Shayomer, the father in law can say, Lechichi. Hayisi wrote Salita, and I wanted to give it to your brother, meaning this is what he's telling the Yavam, the brother in law who's awaiting Ibam. I only wanted to give it to your brother who now died, but to you I can't give the money. And the Mishnah can use Paschal Hachnis Lo Elif Dinor. Let's say she she pledges to bring into the marriage as part of her dowry 1,000 dinar as cash. So the halacha there is who pose kenegdon chomesh esrei mona. So he has to now pledge in the ksuba to give her in the event of a divorce, or let's say she becomes a widow. He has to now pledge to give an additional fifteen mona, and meaning to say that is more than a thousand dinar. He has to add on a little bit because the cash equivalent in terms of the ksuba is going to be a little more. Now let's say she brings in metaltalin that are evaluated. So there he actually who posek pachos chomish. There he actually is able to put into the ksuba. He's got a, He actually deducts one fifth from the value of these items, and we'll see Rashi in a moment. And the Mishnah continues, Shum b'mona v'shav Now, if, she, if what she brought in was evaluated at a mona, and it's actually worth a mona, a mona is 100 dinar, so ain't lo'el a mona. So there, he can only say it's a mona, he has to say it's actually 100 dinar. But shum b'mona, but if it's just evaluated at a mona, but it's not really a mona, as again, we're going to see in Rashi, so he no sen es shloshim v'echor sela v'dinar. So then, she actually has to give a little more. She has to give 31 sela and a dinar. Uva'arba meos, he no sen es chamesh meos, and let's say it was evaluated at four, she has to give 500 ma and that which and we'll take a look at Rashi over here let's say his son-in-law died this is going on the first case of the Mishnah where he pledged a certain amount in the as a dowry to the son-in-law and the son-in-law died 
V'nafla lifna yavam. Now she fell to the yavam to do yibam. V'hutovei amasha pasku liyachiv. He wants the money that was going to be given to his brother. So yachalu sheyomer. So the father-in-law can say, I'm not going to give you the money. O chalotz o yibam. It's your choice to chalitz or yibam. Avolachiv o yite no teshavat sheyal ben rosha. However, when the brother had the brother still still been alive, he has to give the money. And if he doesn't give the money, so the the son-in-law can say, let her sit until her head becomes white, meaning to say, I'm not going to take any action until I get my money. Who posts a connect on Tesva of money? So then it said if she brings cash into the marriage, let's say a thousand dinar, so he has to put into the ksuba an additional fifteen money, as we're going to see, an additional fifteen money is more than the thousand dinar. Shlish Yoser, that's actually a third more than the thousand dinar that she brought into the marriage. Yekavlam all of Lichto Biksuba, so he has to write that into the Ksuba Levanto Sefis, Shumosa, besides for any other additional Lafisha Mistaker Ben, because when a cash is brought in, he's able to make money from that. That's actually worth more. He can Use that a thousand dinar to make more. Elef dinar he nasara mana. Elef dinar a thousand dinar is ten mana, and he has to put in fifteen mana. Fifteen mana is one third more. You take one third of fifteen is five, and you add that to the ten. He has to put into the ksuba right into the ksuba one third more. Now let's say there's an evaluated property that comes into the dowry. Let's say she's bringing into the marriage clothing or, or utensils and they have a certain evaluation. And they're going to be used. And so when they're used, they actually lose value. Or pragmatia, they can be used as, as merchandise for business. What usually happens is, when these kind of things are pledged into the marriage, they're evaluated at a higher value than they actually are worth. That's to honor the Kala, and to make her more beloved. So in such a situation, there, he gets to pledge, he did Ducks one fifth. Lomi by the Lomosif. There he doesn't have to add into the ksuba more than their value. Ella shapoches. He can actually do less. Shemichnisa shum shall elav dinar. For example, let's say she brings in something evaluated a thousand. Who kosev ches He's he's able to write in there that he's only going to give eight hundred zuz in that situation. Again, he's able to deduct one fifth of the value. One fifth of one thousand is going to be two hundred zuz. So he deducts two hundred zuz from the thousand zuz. And the Mishnah continued shum b'mona v'shav b'mona ain lo Mana. Let's say it's evaluated a mana and it's actually worth a mana, so then he receives a mana. And Rashi over here explains, shum alav bishtar haksuba b'mana. Let's say again she brings in some items which are evaluated at a mana and she wants him to write into the, the ksuba a mana. But the item she brought in actually is worth a money in the marketplace. It can be sold to anybody for that value. There he can't say, hey, give me an extra fifth over here in this case, because really it's being evaluated at less. It's not. Because he's going to claim that in general, don't we always say that we deduct the fifth? What the Mishnah is saying is, no, that doesn't apply to all evaluations. It only applies to things that are evaluated in the house of the chasen v'anisum, in the house where the marriage is taking place because there they would build up the value more than it's actually worth. So if she's telling him in, in that kind of situation, if she's telling him write an extra money into the ksuba, he can say you need to add on a fifth because the evaluation is not going to be accurate. Umiyu tosef is shlish lo yosef. But Rashi points out over here, let's say she brings in movable objects that are actually worth the money and he's writing in a money into the ksuba but he doesn't have to add a third like he does with cash. Shalom amr lo yosef shlish el we only say that he has to add a third into the ksuba when we're talking about actual money, actual coins, because that he can profit with right away. But shum b'mana he knows sen shloshim v'yechad seller v'dino. Now let's say she says, "I want to write in a mana," but now we're doing the evaluation not in the marketplace. So now she actually does have to add on, as Rashi over here says, shum shum mekavlo b'mana. If there's something that he's evaluating and saying, "I'm going to write a mana into the star for this," she'amr lo ksov mana b'chsuba. They tell him, "You got to write an extra mana in the ksuba for this stuff that she's bringing in." V'itachnes loch shum shal mana, and she's going to bring in for you something that's evaluated in a mana. Tzarech she yishomu also bebayis shel chasana. So when you're evaluating it in the house of the chasana, you have to evaluate it at more than a mana. Again, a mana is 100 dinar, and you have to evaluate it at shloshim of echad sel of a dinar, at 31 sel in a dinar, which actually is a total of 125 dinar, to have a mana v'chumsho. That's a total of a mana plus a fifth. Again, because if you have 125 dinar, you take a, a fifth of the 125. That is 25. That's considered a fifth added on to the 100. Uvedalid meos, and then there was another example in the Mishnah. Let's say it's 400. Shum she'yikabalav lechtov 
Arba Meos. If again she's bringing stuff in and she's asking that 400 be written into the Ksuba, he no senes chamesh Meos. Again, she has to give 500. She has to add on a fifth because you take a fifth of 500, which is 100. That's 100 added on to the 400. Lefishumas Hanoa Dimsham, according to the way they're evaluating over there. And we'll continue with this discussion in the next video. And Dafsamech Vov Omid Beis.